The story of Lata Mangeshkar, the white sari clad playback singer's vocal range has been as dazzling as her diamonds. Lata was a playful tomboy studying music from her father, Master Dinanath Mangeshkar. Unfortunately for young Lata, her father passed away when she had barely reached adolescence. Lata became the breadwinner for her mother and four younger siblings. Beginning with Pahili Mangla Gaur. In 1942, Lata acted in as many as eight Hindi and Marathi films in the 1940s while simultaneously struggling to establish herself as a playback singer. Travelling by Mumbai's local trains, the determined struggler who would always be accompanied by a sister finally won her first break as a playback singer with "Aapki Seva Me," released in 1947. <laughs> with established singers like Amir Bai Karnataki Shamshad Begum and Rajkumari around Lata's thin voice trained to be heard however leading composer Gulam Haider reposed his faith in Lata and gave her songs in Majboor and Padmini which brought her some attention But the true efflorescence of Lata's talent was witnessed in 1949 when she unleashed more than a dozen super hit songs in three musical blockbusters with composer Noshad in Andaz with Shankar Jaikishan in Barsat हवा में उड़ता जाए एंड खेमचंद प्रकाश इज महल लता में हैव स्टिल हैड ट्रेसेस ऑफ आइडल Noor Jahan in a singing but several composers have spotted the uncut diamond and done their best to burnish it with diction lessons and umpteen rehearsals at 20 lata had decidedly arrived as she sang for top line composers of the day like Noshad C Ramchandra Anil Biswas and Husnulal Bhagat Ram <laughs> In the 1950s Lata became the first choice of most music directors. A songs in Avara Ghar aaya mera pardesi pyaas puchi meri akhiyan ki Beju Bawra Anarkali Nagan Shri 420 were all huge successes. Bachpan ki mohabbat ko She soon surpassed Shamshad Begum and Geeta Dutt and became a legend while still in her 20s. In between multiple recordings, Lata found time to compose music for the Marathi film Ram Ram Pauna under the name Anand Ghan. She even produced films like Vadal, Janjar and Kanchan. When Filmfare announced its best playback singer award, it was but natural that the first recipient be Lata, who won it for Madhumati Siren song Aajare Pardesi. मैं तो कब से खड़ी इस पार इन 1950 नो वाले ने हाय मेरा दिल लो सपने नो वाले होने वाले हिकमत वाले एज द 1960s डॉन लता वेंट फ्रॉम स्ट्रेंथ टू स्ट्रेंथ स्टिल अनक्वेश्चनेबली द न्यूमेरो वन and formed formidable teams with music directors like Madan Mohan and Roshan 
the Nargis Madhubala Gita Bali generation may have been succeeded by a new generation of heroines like Sadhna, Asha Parikh and Shamila Tagore, but Lata was a constant. Lata never made any compromises. With a squeaky clean image, Lata was steadfast about choosing the song she wanted to sing. If she sang the rare cabaret number like A Ja Ne Ja from In The Calm, it was more to explore the limits of her versatility. Fortunately for film music, they soon made up with Lata. Besides the hits, Lata also won critical acclaim for her rendition of maestro Pandit Ravi Shankar's tunes in Rishikesh Mukherjee's Anuradha. Then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was famously moved by Lata's rendition of the non-film patriotic number E Mere Vatan Ke Logo Zara Aak Pe Bhar Lo Pani and she was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 1969. In the 70s and early 80s, Lata's position at the top was unshakable as the three leading music directors of the period, Lakshmigan Pyarlal, R.D. Burman and Kalyanji Ananji, lavished their best on her. Whether it was Satyam Shivam Sundaram, Shole or Mukaddar Ka Sikaddar, Lata was a common factor. Lata's Royal Albert Hall concert in London paved the way for other shows. In the disco era of the mid-1980s, Lata drastically cut down on her workload, though she did have the occasional hit like Ram Teri Ganga Meli. The Lata-dominated scores of Chani and Mene Pyar Kiya coincided with the resurgence of romance at the close of the decade. Thereafter, Lata worked largely with quality banners like RK Fahena, Rajshri's Hum Aap Kya Kaun, and YRF's Dilwale Dulaniya Le Jayenge and Dil To Pagal Hai. With new music directors like A.R. Rahman, Lata proved herself equal to still creating something exquisite like Zubaydah's So Gaye Hai. In her sunset years, Lata busied herself with her master, Tina Nath Hospital. The diva was fond of watching cricket and was an avid photographer. Lata, who remained single all her life, continued to be devoted to her art. She always removed her chapels before entering the recording room. May God rest her soul in peace. Then, friends, this is the story of 1958-59. Our famous प्रोड्यूसर हैं यश चोपड़ा साहब उनका फोन आया डैडी को कि महेंद्र जी हम आपसे हमारी अगली फिल्म के लिए अपने हीरो के सारे गाने गवाना चाहते हैं तो क्या आप कल स्टूडियो आ सकेंगे डैड वहां गए स्टूडियो पर तो पहुंचे तो देखा कि वहां रिकॉर्डिंग चल रही थी तो डैड ने समझा कि मैं डिस्टर्ब ना करूं वेटिंग रूम में वहां बैठ गए अब जैसे टेक खत्म हुआ वो सिंगर जो थे वो लता जी थे उन्होंने विंडो से देखा कि डैड वहां बैठे हैं उन्होंने पहचान लिया तो दौड़ती हुई चली गई वहां पर और दरवाजा खोलकर कहती हैं आप महेंद्र कपूर हैं कहते हैं गाय जी तो कहती है मैं बहुत खुश हूं आपको मिलकर क्योंकि मुझे मदन भैया ने और नौशाद साहब ने बहुत तारीफ की आपकी तो डैड ने उनके पैरों को हाथ लगाया वो लता जी थी आओ आओ महेंद्र भैया आओ आओ मेरे साथ अंदर आओ तो उनको अंदर सिंगर बूथ में ले गई और बड़े प्यार से उनसे बातें करती रही उनसे पूछा संगीत के बारे में और जब टाइम आया टेक का देखा कि डैड पहली बार इतनी बड़ी शख्सियत लता मंगेशकर जी के साथ गाने लगे थे तो कुछ नर्वस लग रहे थे तो जैसे पहली रिहर्सल खत्म हुई तो बड़े तरीके से डैड से पूछते हैं कि महेंद्र भैया मेरी आवाज ठीक लग रही है मैं सुर में तो गा रही हूँ ना कहीं हिल तो नहीं रही ना सुर से तो डैड ने कहा दीदी क्या बात कर रही हैं आप आप बहुत प्यार गा रही हैं तो इस तरह डैड रिलैक्स हो गए और फिर वो ऐतिहासिक गाना तेरे प्यार का आसरा चाहता हूँ रिकॉर्ड हुआ ये तो एक बात है दोस्तों
बातें बहुत सी हैं लेकिन इतनी महान शख्सियत लता जी जो हैं वो सिर्फ इसलिए नहीं कि वो लाजवाब सिंगर थी शी वॉज द नाइटिंग गेल हमारे स्वरों की सारिका थी वो लेकिन उनका स्वभाव जो बच्चों जैसा स्वभाव था ना वो उनके गाने में और चार चांद लगा देता था और साथ ही साथ उनका जो ये स्वभाव था कि आप पता नहीं जानते हो जानते हो कि जो रिकॉर्ड्स थे वो फोर्टीज़ में पहले सिंगर्स के नाम नहीं लिखे जाते थे सिर्फ कंपोजर का नाम और फिल्म का नाम आता था तो सिंगर्स को कहना पड़ता था मैं जी एम दुरानी मैं मोहम्मद रफ़ी मैं लता मंगेशकर मैं नूर जान वो गाने के एंड में बोला करते थे तो लता जी को ये बहुत ख़राब लगी बात तो एक लता जी हैं जो हर काम में बहुत आगे आती थी और उन्होंने ये निश्चय कर लिया था और उन्होंने ये करके दिखाया कि हर रिकॉर्ड पर सिंगर का भी नाम होना चाहिए फिर रॉयल्टी की बात आज कितने सिंगर्स हैं जिनके घर चल रहे हैं रॉयल्टी से ये भी लता जी की देन थी लता जी एक बहुत महान गायिका और एक बहुत महान इंसान थी ऐसी महान शख्सियत ऐसी महान सिंगर जो हमारे लिए सदियों तक प्रेरणा बनेगी मैं ऐसी शख्सियत को प्रणाम करता हूँ Lata ji had sung countless songs for Baba's films. She called him Bimalda and called Ma Bodhi, Bengali for Bhabi. She treated Ma just like a family member. When my sister Prajita got married in 1975, she gifted a beautiful mango-shaped locket to her and gave us a car and driver for 24/7 for a couple of weeks to help out with the wedding. And at the wedding itself, she sat at the mandap all through the duration of the wedding in hmv my job itself was to look after artists including lata ji i spent time with her during recordings she was very partial to chinese cuisine so we used to get food from chopsticks at church gate when we recorded at western outdoor studios in fort her favorite was chicken in taro nest she had a wicked sense of humor and would keep us in splits throughout the meal of late i believe she wouldn't leave the house or allow visitors maybe she felt a sense of mortality i will end by quoting what she said in a long six part free wheeling documentary called lata in her own voice made by my friend muni kabir when asked about the change in recording techniques over the years she said previously the orchestra was there to give the singer a break nowadays The singers are there to give the orchestra a break. So true, isn't it? Ne kaha kuch bhi nahi kuch dil ne suna. कुछ भी नहीं ऐसी भी बातें होती है ऐसी भी बातें होती है कुछ दिल ने कहा दिल की तसली के लिए झूठी चमक झूठा निखार जीवन तो सोना ही रहा सब समझे आई है बाहर कलियों से कोई पूछता हंसती है वो यारोती है आई हैड द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरेक्ट विथ हर रिसेंटली नवंबर 2020 इट वाज वेयर शी सेंट मी अ लवली मैसेज वेयर शी स्पोक अबाउट माय फादर and the films and the songs uh that that you know she sang some great songs for let me read that out to you shri anand chipi ji was a very nice person who shared a warm camaraderie with me some of my 
memorable songs and super hits were from his films such as Vokonthi, Gumnam in the 60s, Ghar and Sargam in the 80s, Meri Jang in the later days. Lagja Gale from Vokonthi went on to become a perennial classic. I remember after the recording of this song, Madan Bhaiya, that's Madan Mohan, the composer, um, ran towards me and hugged me for my rendition. CPG was extremely delighted and was confident the music would create history. His understanding for good music continued in his films. Some of my personal favorites were from his films. Songs such as Tere Bina Jiya Jayana, Aajkal Paon Zami Par, From Ghar, composed by R.D. Barman, and the super hit songs from Sargam, especially Dafli Wale, Dafli Baja, by Lakshmi Kant Pyaralal, was a permanent fixture, along with Nena Barse from Wok On Thi, in many of my live concerts all over the world. When I was just 24, Lutere, I wrote a song as a debut filmmaker, one of the few songs I gave my names to as a lyricist. Ay Savan Baraz Zara, Ay Badal Garaj Zara, Jo Radha Ne Kaha Shaam Se, Jo Sita Ne Kaha Ram Se, Mujh Ko Bhi Kehne De Zara. So I also want to say one thing, in her memory it's unbelievable that Lata Mangeshkar is also mortal. I'm sure all of us are thinking this thing right now, yeah. And uh, I, like any new director, a new lyricist, both I was, I was with Lata Mangeshkar sing my song. And she came, she complimented me, she sang and she went away. And then can you imagine 15 years later, there I was in my debut as a beginner, and here I was at my peak as an established filmmaker. And she came for Bevafa 15 years later and sang the famous Kese Piyas Se Me Kahu Kitna Pyaar Hai. So she had sung for Raj Kapoor and then for his granddaughter Karina Kapoor. And uh, amazing memory she had. She remembered the clothing I had worn 15 years before when I was just at my debut and I was much slimmer then. And then 15 years later, I had all the baggage on my body, on my mind of a filmmaker in Bollywood with all its pressures. But she remembered. Lata Mangeshkar stayed the same. And the amazing thing I remember about her is that after the song finished, she just didn't sit in her car and go away. She came down. She heard the whole song. Subscribe to the Rock Vidya YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to get regular updates.